Welcome, world champions, to another episode of the 3CC, the third Continental Congress. It's not starting soon. It's started. Let's get that off the screen. I hope everybody's having a good Sunday so far. Let's see the chat. Oh, everybody's saying odd stuff. Oh, my gosh. Is one, is one of, one of the, the most insanely, insanely Let's let idiotic. Billy Madison talk a little bit. Nope, I'm shutting him off. Welcome, Laughing Dog, World Champions in the Web. Reckon it's Skunk12. Hello, World Champions. Gah! Says, hey, Plick, the channel member. Drilling square holes. Those are the ramblings of Mad Men. That was a great riddle I posed on Twitter earlier today. What is the only thing you can put in a barrel that makes it lighter? It's a hole. It's a whole Vaughn Salinator, world champions, yo, from Cun and Stunt, that you're going to be a tricky one to address. I'll do my best. I'm going to say some naughty words when I try. Twitch. That's personal. Skunk12. <laughs> recovery going. How is uh, the Deacon Mojax recovery? We have a real question. It's going well. I uh, connected with him just a few days ago. The good Deacon Mojax. Hey, what's up, world champions? The good. Find my microphone zone here while hitting a bunch of buttons. Forgive me. Forgive me. Welcome. Let's go back to the chat for a second. I have some special guests for you guys. We'll introduce them here in just a minute. Uh, Cupid stunt. we got a lot of stunts in the house. Moonchild, welcome. Yes, the second half of this show, we are going to do the 3CC stress test. We're going to have a live group congressional call. It's going to be absolute madhouse. So ever here in this first hour... With our total eclipse episode, we'll talk about what you guys are doing for that. We have two special guests, and the three of us make the three little pigs, three generations. Our first guest, our main one, the main guy, the cool guy, the important guy, Danny Kunzelman, RNC delegate, P, uh, delegate for PA fifteen. I don't know what that means, but you're going to tell us. Yeah, you want me to do it right now? No, just 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 one second, you professional. <laughs> our other guest today, Shafe. But I'm not the big guy. He's not important. Nobody likes him, including himself. So I'm sitting way no, over here. Great dude. He has uh, been rolled into the film project. So we're going to talk about that mm -hmm. some as well. But then here in the second half of this show, we're going to get everybody on the group call. And uh, I think both of you guys may hang out. It should be a good time. Wild West. We'll see what goes down. But Danny, let me try to shut off this jungle music here for a second. You are the... Uh, candidate for rnc delegate for pf 15 what does that mean well one of eight to preface that with <laughs> but a delegate candidate for the republican national convention is just a candidate who wants to represent a region a district for their respective areas to nominate the presidential candidate of their people's choice and the way it works in pennsylvania is we have um 17 congressional districts and of those 17 congressional districts, each district has three delegates to then go nominate a Republican candidate okay. for the presidency. And so candidate for PA 15 delegate means I'm running to be one of three in Pennsylvania's 15th congressional district. I see. And you are, I should have mentioned that whole three little pigs thing, but we've got sort of three generations going on here and I'm squarely in the middle today. You're on the younger end. You're in college still. Is that true? Yeah. Jealous a little bit. Um, are you, you're like a public, a public figure to some degree. Are you openly going to talk about like where you physically are and where you go to college? I don't want to dox you by yeah, it. No, I don't have a problem with that. Okay. I mean, I'm probably going to get doxed anyway. So what does it well, matter? Well, you're, if you're running for office, you're, you people are going to know you. Yeah. They also have my address on all the filing <laughs> forms anyways. It, it's not like it's a secret. So would you tell us then, um, where you're from and and where you go to school and why you're interested in, in politics at such a young age. I didn't care till 10 years after how old you are now, I think. So take it away. Well, I'm from Punxsutawney. So like if any of you know Groundhog Day. Yes. Yeah. That's, that's super cool. It, I mean, it is a cool thing to just walk around. Like of all the small towns with weird names, mine's the one that's known. That's so. got it. That's a Native American, surely. Yeah. Town of the Sandflies. <laughs> that's what that means? <laughs> yep. Lenny Lenape. Why? 
sand flies. Yeah, like you know those like little gnats that have like little swarms. No, I know what they are, yeah. but why is there? Or do you have them up there? We used to until like until the, the settlers in, like the inland drenched. ocean with the dinosaurs dried up and they all went away. Well, more or less, whenever the settlers just like dredged the stream in the town. All right, uh, segue into how many times have you personally removed fill from the ground? I have not. You have to be part of this like cool guys club called the follow up question. How annoying is it when you tell people you're from Punxsutawney that the first thing they always ask you about is that stupid groundhog? It, it's not that annoying. I'm sorry. When but... I say stupid, <laughs> I'm saying it the way Bill Murray said it in Groundhog Day, an endearing, likable way. <laughs> well, I, I mean, it's kind of nice for people to know where you're from. How, so, what is what is like the population of Punk's It's town? only like forty eight hundred people. Forty eight hundred. Yeah, in the zip code. So wow. Not even just the borough. But you're, I mean, you're around all of us. It's not totally an island. But uh, I went up, I went up there and played football against you guys years and years. Yeah, we and probably years sucked. Ago. Yeah, we won. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, it's you know, when you've got twelve people in the town, you can eleven of them around the field. So, all right, so you're a PA guy. And you're uh, in college, are you a senior, your final year, your middle of it? or Yeah, it's my first semester of my senior year at Penn State. First semester of senior year. Yeah. And, oh, are you graduating early then? Yeah. Look at a... this guy. You're serious. So we've got, it's kind of, it doesn't, it doesn't um, all click for me fully because uh, having a serious, intelligent person as a politician makes no sense in the world I grew up in. So what do you... Did, did, did you have like a, some sort of moment in high school or even earlier where you're like, I need to get involved? So it's kind of a joke how it got started. It was I was in this earth science class with a teacher talking about global warming. And I would just like, it's not like I was denying anything or not. It was just, it was known that I was a conservative because mm. my, like, you just have that vibe, I guess. Sure. High school of, who comes from the conservative family? This guy comes from the liberal has families. emotional self control and uses logic. He must be a conservative. <laughs> well, one day I turned in an assignment and somehow put a jab at Hillary Clinton. I don't remember how I put the jab at Hillary Clinton. And after that, the teacher just kept this uh, rhetoric between us. And I appreciate it. And I love the guy. He's one of my favorite teachers from high school. But if it weren't for him just like prodding and making jokes about it, I would not have cared whatsoever, probably. Okay. And it was just a snowballing effect of, well, if I'm going to make a point to disagree with this teacher, I need to know why I disagree with him. Okay. See, they're already two steps beyond pretty much everybody else young who tries to argue. You're like, my point needs to make sense. Yeah, I guess that, that would be true. <laughs> um, and then, okay, so uh, doubt, like to actually take the step of running for something at your age seems unusual in a good way and not something like again i was too busy caring about beer not that not that you don't we've we've hung out before off screen and you're a real person <laughs> who has fun and does real things but i mean i'm truly genuinely asking and maybe we'll get shafe in here with some some wise old questions and thoughts here too in a second but i don't know that i like would have put in the time as a senior in college to go to anything political yeah, it's a stretch between, so I'm a double major in history and political science. Okay. And then have a minor that's a subset in history. And it is difficult to make it to 18 different counties to try to convince people why they should vote for you, particularly in a race that nobody really knows about. Yeah. I'm that, like, why not uh, become a historian? I mean, I you can understand history or, and there's like, tell people about it or you can understand history and then do what you need to do to prevent it from repeating participate itself. in yeah. it that's a great answer i really like that actually quite a bit uh we have been getting some super uh, chats here i'm going to address those before the break i did finally fix so that they show up so i do notice them this time i see you guys but we'll also uh, check some some questions here i'm sure some of you are, are asking about danny and whatnot okay so um <clears throat> Do you so so getting the, the 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 form of history that is in some sense alive? You want to participate in it, be a character in it. I yeah, like you don't that. want to let the textbooks not remember. Yeah. Uh do you where what's do you have an end goal? Are you going for president someday or? I'll, I'll see where everything takes me. I just I want to. All my ultimate goal is to leave a legacy in the Republican Party. A, yeah. Amen. Like reform the party. I, I'm tired of this establishment party that has this dissonance between the base and the elites. I, I'm tired of a country club elitist party 
where I feel like I need to wear a button up with a Columbia vest and khaki <laughs> pants. <laughs> There's a lot of different kinds of um, conservatives now. Yeah, and it's we have this broad tent party or big tent party right now, and I think we need to capitalize on that and actually represent that big tent and not just corporate interests, globalist interests, elite interests, and in, like actually care about our neighbors and the people around us and their values. Like I grew up in one of the poorest counties in Pennsylvania mm -hmm. and working as a cashier at Walmart in high school, I had to look my neighbors in the eyes whenever they would swipe their EBT cards. And it, it makes a sense of like, I got to do something like it could, this, this, it could all be a lot better than this maybe. And, yeah, like, and, and yet no one's doing it. So you drive down the main street of your hometown that you hear had all these nice houses in the seventies and eighties. Mm. And then here I am in the 2010s and 2020s driving down main street and they're blighted. I'm going to check the chat here real quick. If anybody has a Danny specific question at the moment, why is there no video here on rumble? Oh, well, we'll double check that. Uh, oh, just uh, yeah, Lord of the Re answered your question. Just hit refresh. <laughs> and I think you just figured it out, too. Um, I really, really, really am glad you decided to um, not that it was a that you were saying you weren't going to, but but that you that you've come on live and also that it happens to have happened at a time while Shafe is here. And uh, quickly, just to introduce Shafe and then rope you into this discussion, whether you want to be involved or not. You and I have gotten to know each other over the past few weeks. You are a film guy. You worked... Um, a lot of years. Film and television. Mm -hmm. uh, you have your own channel we'll take a look at here. But you, like me, sort of have done all this creative stuff and... Um, are looking for a way to tie it all together so that it has some sort of legacy purpose whatnot we started talking about the film i'm working on and now you and i are going to shoot a scene for it together we're looking at doing that and i, th I think one of the reasons uh, you like working with me is because i know all the areas around here so i, I can go on location and find the, the great uh the great you have to value to me well beyond your utility <laughs> yes Shave. yes and uh, my, uh, my social security card but uh I just want to say, this is a difference, this young man here, is a difference between a young conservative kid talking about his beliefs and a scrambling or a screaming, who knows what, screaming <laughs> about their beliefs. There is a big difference, and, and I'd rather be on this side. But I've spent a lot of years uh, working in the media, about 33, 34 years. And so I have the unique perspective of, of seeing up close what it was like, uh, what happened in newsrooms. There were times when I'd be on location, and I didn't, you know, I didn't shoot a lot of news because I just didn't like it. You know, sitting outside of courtrooms waiting for perps to walk by is just not much fun. <laughs> but there were times when I would shoot uh, uh, content on location and bring back all the notes and you know the interviews, and then I'd hand it in to uh, the editors. And then at eleven o'clock at night, uh, the news would come on, and I'd watch one of the stories I've shot, and uh, it had nothing to do with what really happened. Yeah, and that it wasn't just one time that it, that was like that, and so yeah, my my perspective of the media is it's uh, it's great to do uh, production that's not news related, and I love uh, doing. I did a lot of film work over the years down in Miami. I've been in uh, Minnesota, uh, Twin Cities, and Pittsburgh with uh, PBS and KDK TV. So I've been I've I've got some background, and uh, a lot of it has been otherworldly fun, and very little of it actually is, has been frustrating. And you're uh, what I would kind of frame as for the younger guys. You probably won't even know what I mean by this, although we have talked about it to some degree. But you're like an OG meme smith. And what that OG means, original gangster. Oh. So an OG is like a, you know, a real old school, like KRS1. Nobody, do you even? I have never been called a gangster you? before. but KRS1? No, Danny? <laughs> no. Oh, my God. I'm old now. Um. <laughs> Uh, you're an OG meme smith and the meme smith. So you've been creating content since before the internet and the compute computers yes. and electricity and mammals were even formed. My first computer was a K Pro. <laughs> but you and I have had, sat here and had some quite fun creative conversations with colorful language and said so you're like an old meme smith. You're not a. Uh, you know, I, I, that can, could maybe make both of us be worried. But, <laughs> but yes, uh, I agree with you. And then uh, I think creative people 
kind of understand each other in ways that other people don't understand us? I just, I'm, I'm hammering the point home for the younger guys. <laughs> for the younger, no, I'm kidding. You're not like the rest of the younger guys, and you're really not, I was just joking aside. But um, the, the older generation and the younger and the middle one were, is not just some kind of monolith. Um, like you, Shafe, you know mm. lots of technical stuff I'll never know about cameras, but the technology changes and stuff. And so by the day, we've sort of accidentally uh, got this um, sort of synergistic uh, teamwork going where the things I don't know, you seem to know quite well and vice versa. And, um, and then the whole creative side is, though, really interesting. Yeah. You have this, I don't want to tell too much, but you have this quite hilarious visual meme idea that we're starting to work on and create some little things for and yeah yes you might go down the toilet but who knows <laughs> <laughs> but you well, were uh go ahead sorry well, one thing that that if you remember on one of our first conversations uh when i looked at uh, your work and uh you're a very gifted writer and uh, I, I said no matter what uh, project you're going to try to work on it's the content it's the idea it's a creative behind what you're trying to do if it's worthless the project's worthless but you still, I don't really know the, the, I don't mean anything by this when I say like at your age, it's just cause relative to me, you're older, but like your energy yeah, and your creative and where, where I was going with that statement <laughs> was to set up the contrast with how high and energetic and interesting and creative you are still, um, you know, you're, you're a meme smith at heart. I think you're I a creator, work, you're a maker. <laughs> I, still, I still work out. So, <laughs> um, and, but you have, um, jokingly, you obviously have way more value as a friend than as a location specialist <laughs> but you have found some really cool stuff for us already yeah i think there's uh, there's opportunity in this town uh, and i know of uh, quite a few places for the type of film you want to produce and uh, i think we're on a good track i think so too i'm gonna jam you guys here together whoops you're not johnny mojack i hit the wrong button there it is danny when you look at a guy like shafe let's start with that does does his existence at all surprise you is it encouraging? Uh, is it like, I, let me back up for For me, a big problem when I started you, YouTubing and when I started getting involved in conservative politics is because I felt like they're older guys and me were not on the same page. And so running into people like Shafe slowly over time is interesting to me. Like, how, how is that for you? So I'm, I think I come at this from a different angle because of the fact I grew up in Punxsy where it's a small town. We don't have many people there. So those that were politically involved, interesting, they were older for the most part. Interesting. So it was actually kind of funny. I got to know more of the grandparents in the town than I knew of like the middle-aged adults because they were the ones who were politically active. So being around people like Shafe, it, it's, I wonder that's if the you, norm. Do you, like, do you maybe have that unique perspective because of that? this small small town where you're we kind of forced to not forced in a bad way but just by the nature of the environment to interact with i, I would say so because i mean even going to church on sundays you would just it, it was the older crowd that you were always around so yeah. you had this very absent middle-aged population because you had a lot of retirees and then the young people that were there were minimal and then you had their parents it wasn't like there was a large yeah. middle-aged population interesting interesting so it's a, it's not, not, I mean, it was, uh, we would, I would call it a white pill. Someone like Shafe is a white pill for me. He's a pick me up. He's a, gives me energy. Um, so same question. In I work reverse. Out. <laughs> a lot, a lot of the older guys seem surprised when they see people like Danny at that age, that they're conservative. Yeah. yeah. And I'm glad they're around to be honest. Uh, we need young people to get in this movement because the Republican party is really the party for everyone. You know, we do, we don't discriminate, even even though the the media out there it will label it otherwise. Yeah, yes, absolutely. So, yeah, it's some good kids. Um, are you partially Shafe doing this to you know you see guys like Danny, uh, and and like like are you feeling in a sense you're trying to save the Republican Party by bringing in these younger guys, getting them up to speed, or are they already doing fine on their own? Or uh, I I I try to do that, yeah, but I also have kids, and, and I I talk right. to got three kids one one young man's in the navy i've got an architect son and uh, a daughter that's a nurse so all three of them we we when we grew them we took part in their lives and, and we sat with them with uh with their homework we mentored them i, I coached them all in football and in uh, baseball and my daughter was cheerleading I, I went to all her games so we we took part in our children's lives and i think that is the best example and that's how we cultivate conservatism too 
Because when people see how it works, and it does, then they say, I want some of that. Do you find your your older crowd when you guys are being social, do you have like, how do we reach these young idiots? Uh, or is it really just... I guess I think I think it just there's there's a profound amount of ignorance going on right now, and I think the the cell phones now are, are nothing more than a adult pacifier, and I think uh, the kids are so plugged into that, and I get it, you know, TikTok and and uh, Instagram, they're very funny, but I think in order for people to change their beliefs and actually get active, they have to be impacted by what's going on, and I think maybe the last three years it's the first time a lot of people have been impacted. By what's going on and i think that's what make that's what's making people uh, pay attention and the younger folks are looking ahead and they're, they're looking right now at their, their parents and saying to themselves i'm not gonna be able to do what my mom and dad did not right. with interest rates like this and the cost of living on and on so you look at younger kids saying you don't fault them for that in fact you would you would agree like the situation is worse for current generation than it was when you were younger I think it is, and an, another uh, huge impact is because of uh, what they're being taught in schools. The, uh, the I, I tell you what, charter schools are, not everybody can afford a private school for a kid, but I think that's what's really dragging down this country is how uh, children are being taught in, uh, in all the way from kindergarten. Every parent can tell you a story, every parent. And you, Danny, just went through this education. What's it really like these days? What did you learn? I mean, I think I was lucky coming from a small town where you hear about all this left-wing bias and education, but I was in a small town where largely we were disconnected from a lot of this stuff. Like we didn't have the propaganda being pushed on us whenever I was going through this, like public school education. What I think, like I said, was a saving grace was the fact that I came from the small town that even the very left-wing teachers didn't really care about telling their students they weren't activists. what to believe. No, they yeah. weren't. Yeah. So I actually have very fond memories with a lot of my left wing teachers. And I just think I came from a position of essentially a fairly well off town being that we were so disconnected from the rest of which the is country. funny because then you just said, I mean, punks a ton. That's not a particularly wealthy area right and yet no. well off in the sense that you were um i uh, think we were culturally well off yes yeah there mm -hmm. you go good point interesting interesting and then at a university now a major one um i mean again there's so many different classes and your experience is going to be different than than one of the other fifty thousand people there right now but in a sense maybe and you talk to um, we had Jack on the show. I'm sure we'll see him again. I mean, what is it like being a college student? I watch the news, and it seems like college appears to be 99.9% .9 rabid leftists. 99.9% .9 rabid vocal leftists. <laughs> so that is true. Yeah. Well, I would say that my personal experience at Penn State has shown me that a vast majority of the student body just doesn't care. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's yeah. it. And mm. what's interesting about Penn State is that I don't think as a crazy left-wing bias in the student population, I think we have left-wing bias ingrained in the administration mm. and the bureaucratic apparatus that yep. then directs student funding to these left-wing agendas that makes it appear that it's far more gone or unsalvageable than it actually, than it is. actually is. Interesting. I got something too, John. When I was yeah. at, uh, when I, I got out of the army, and I got a, a great package from Penn State to go to school up here, which was phenomenal. And I remember the first semester I was here, I had an anthropology class, and I actually liked the uh, the instructor. And uh, I think uh, two or three classes in uh, September, spring or uh, fall term, <laughs> he encouraged all, everybody, all the guys to stand up and take their gra draft cards outside and burn it by the Willard uh, preacher and burn them out there. You had the Willard preacher back then? Oh, yes. That's, yeah, was it the did. same guy? Uh, Is his name Gary? It, it was, if it wasn't him, was his son or is he? What goes so you know, so he's still there. Yeah, then. Gary's there every day. My God, our connecting fact between all three of us is the Willard preacher. <laughs> I but smile I, every time I walk by. I just couldn't understand the why. Why are we even talking about the Vietnam's over? It was uh, 1977, and I, I just didn't understand why it was such a passion for him. And you know, at the time, just being out of the army, I wasn't really all that upset about. It. I just thought it was so odd. And people, people didn't go out and burn their gap, draft cards. The students just went out and went to the next class or just went downtown. 
I'm still. I got distracted by the Laceman part. Part of this, uh, the Willard preacher still around. Was back then. They can't be the same guy. I'm sure it's not. <laughs> that, that that position is willed to others. <laughs> yeah. This is where um, real shows would have a producer doing things while I'm here, coping with this shocking fact. Nobody, nobody probably knows what we're talking about. I think I might go down and do a little live stream with the Willard preacher. Well, you know what? You, you the, you're talking about. We don't know who is there anymore or who was there over the years. Maybe there should be little placards up there with the creature's heads. <laughs> Let's start honoring outside, him. Outside of uh, Willard. I we mean, should give out little statues of him to people that give good speeches. Yeah, like the, uh, like, yeah, the here's Oscar. A, like, yeah, a Willard. <laughs> the Willard. The preachy. <laughs> it's such a, we have a totally inside joke going right now that nobody is understanding. I'm going to address some super chats since you guys have been kind enough to send them. Before I get to those, I'm going to just go through some regular chat. So the chat is up. We're going to do a few seconds here if you have something to say. And did not pay money to say it. I'll read it anyway. Maybe. River Spirit 7. No comparable and different. Three tiny bed. Okay, that was a side convo. Side convo. Little pink houses. I don't know what you... Oh, oh I see why you guys are laughing. Yes. The yes, chat remains an experiment. <laughs> What's that, Lord of the Three? I like that guy. Lord of the Re, I oh, think. Oh, the Re. Um, you know, I did, I believe, not just uh, the super chats that are showing up, thank you, and I'll read these in a second, but the emojis are back. So up to 10 emojis, if you type them, will fly across the <laughs> screen now. That is how you can also mess with us on the show from the chat. So give it a spin. But well, well, that... well, I like the one that says, uh, Dandy, has anyone ever told you you look a little bit like Jonah Hill? Yeah, I've gotten that. <laughs> you do? A lot. Yes, he does. You know who I think he kind of looks like? Zelensky. Bro. Oh. Yeah, he has to buff up. He has to work out with me. You don't think so? Could... No, I mean, no. Come on, girls think Zelensky's hot. <laughs> Not girls that, like, are <laughs> worth girl. my time. <laughs> Not the ones you care about. <laughs> is he Jonah Hill or is he Zelensky? I don't know who you... I don't know, maybe I'm a CIA plant. I don't really look like anybody famous either that I know of, but you... I look like someone. Can you speak Russian? No, unfortunately, I cannot. <laughs> uh, I, I, I scraped through oh, there, three the chat, semesters the chat, of Chinese. The chat woke up. All right, let me read some regular rumble rants in the sky. I can go twice as high. Oh, let me find out if there's anything. Uh, Robert Whaley. Uh, again, just so green with the yellow. That is channel members. After six months, the yellow becomes a white. So you just the longer you go, you get kind of cooler little logos and <laughs> things. I saw um, they would been gifted here. I'll read that in a bit. Zelensky. Right? Uh, Zelensky, Linda Love. Right? I think Zelensky. Zelensky. <laughs> but can you play the piano? <laughs> <laughs> I've never heard the Zelensky one before. You know, I'll pull up a picture of Zelensky here in a second. All right. From YouTube, Kyle Stevens, who's joining us, I believe, in the second half of the show, has gifted a membership, which we found out that you can do, so someone can be a member. Kyle, I have information regarding Hillary Clinton's... <laughs> <laughs> I don't think I want that information, Kyle, but thank you. And then uh, Bear Bear, make commercials for the automotive industry and oftentimes tempted to Tyler Durden splice <laughs> like single <laughs> frames of memes. Why not, That's man? A good idea. It's your story. You can tell your boss John Ward said it was okay. Oh, here we go. So we missed some back here. So uh, Bear Bear from the beginning, welcome to world champion. Uh, Damien Gorilla Grill. <laughs> Gorilla Grill. Is that Fanny Willis? Do you guys know that? Fanny Willis, Gorilla Grip? No. Okay. We'll yeah. get into that later. Is he the pipe bomber? Self-ban in progress. Not sure what that's in re reference to. And then the five memberships gift. So thank you, Bear Bear, for anyone that got a uh, membership. And then Kyle Stevens, Biden loves Ashley. We will be talking about that stuff in the second hour. But some pretty wild, wild shenanigans going on. Let's go to Rumble. Rumble only likes to do the live chats. So let's get up. I saw him here. Lord of the Re. Shout out to Sand King Double, no, single O, double seven. Oh, the reverse. He got 1,000 views on his most recent stream and was even on the front page of Rumble. Heard him freak out from the other room and it was hilarious. He'll be back uh, live after 3CC. All right, sweet. Congratulations. And also Lord of the Rings. Speaking of college, one of my girlfriend's friends was in town over break and came by to visit. She mentioned she was taking gender studies, so I asked her how long it takes to study two things. Incredibly based. <laughs> that is a good joke. 
And over on Pilled or Foxhole, I don't think they have promoted chats. See, William Maines knows what's up. I don't got a beard. William Maines is going to be joining us. He's a great dude. He did the uh, storyboard for our film. So let me get this back to live chat. Live chat. Everybody is back to live chat. Uh, Somebody asked a question that Robert Whaley was also going to ask. Let me see if I can find it. Gorilla Grip Gershwin. (laughs) (laughs) At least Fanny didn't spray uh, spray adhesive on her fanny. Nick by sent thumbs up. Thos Alman. Welcome. Zelensky and Skinny Subway. Skinny Subway Jared. No, I don't see that one. No. Nah. <laughs> Skunk 12, I knew you were cool. All right, I wish I had seen what Skunk 12 said first, but I missed it. Sorry. Frankie Figs, welcome back. She seriously needs... <laughs> I gotta be so good. I don't even know what you guys are talking about. I don't know what you're talking about. You're all insane. You're all crazy. You are all world champions. What time is it? It's 2.30. We got 30 minutes left to go, gentlemen, <laughs> before we even get to the ad break. I, uh, so back up here real quick, the three little pigs, that's the three of us. We have a good conversation going now about the uh, generational thing and how we all see it, uh, with new first time and probably we'll see him again. Danny and Shafe, welcome. What I have not shared with anybody is kind of the way it all seems to me. And since I'm squarely in the middle of it, let me rant at the two of you here for a second and then, uh, get your thoughts. So I am in my mid thirties. We'll say roughly halfway between the two of you. Thank you. And I think <laughs> I think he's closer to me, to be completely honest. You're not old enough to know that you shouldn't shouldn't say shit like that, but we'll <laughs> let it slide. Um I I look at the younger generation and I have concerns. I look at the older generation and I have concerns, and then being in the middle, you come full circle and say, Hey, before either of those two I think I'm kind of the one in the the entering the leadership role of the human society, so to speak. So I see Shafe already or entering the wise old, you know, Gandalf Merlin Gan. Yes, yeah, funny, <laughs> same page, kind of. Yes, Gandalf. Um, you're still part of the battle. You're still out there whacking orcs with your staff and shit sometimes, <laughs> but for the most part, you know, you're riding eagles and. I help me. I don't. I don't remember those books that well. What else did Gandalf do? He oh, whacked uh, things with his staff. He rode eagles. Yeah, yeah, he did, and um, and he changed from gray to white. <laughs> and you're so changing from gray to white. Uh and then I suppose that makes you Frodo, <laughs> or 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 one of the four. Sam yeah. Samwise. You're a little Samwisey. Mm, more Zelensky. <laughs> so what am I? Am I Boromir? Do I steal the ring from you and then realize my folly and kill myself or get killed? You get off in the first picture, right? Or am I Faramir? Am I the, the younger but but wiser, more spiritually pure brother? I saw a um, somebody wrote that, that they're the two versions of saints. So Boromir is the saint that he's the prodigal son, basically. He does everything wrong but then redeems himself. And then Faramir is the always pure saint. Does anyone care about that? I see that. I, I, get, <laughs> I get where you're coming from there. I'm sitting right here in the middle of all this, and I'm throwing out these old people and young people references, and it doesn't work with either of you. Um, I don't know. I don't know. Do either of you look at me? And I feel like I'm the generation that's su- sort of supposed to be um, putting in the work. Am I doing my job? Is my generation doing my job? I think you're picking up the slack where a lot of your generation is just sitting at starbucks drinking their 800 this calorie drink lay it on us give me the truth get angry a little bit here i'm a little angry at the older guys i mean with cell phones <laughs> i mean i don't fault millennials for where we're at because i mean it, it's we're, we have a mess that was handed off to you guys and i kind of lump so millennials and Gen Z. no it's i don't me. fault shit. No, i know i get what you're saying keep going sorry I, I fault the just establishment hacks that have been running this country for decades i mean it's we were handed a deck of really bad cards right now and i think it's between millennials and gen z we have to pick up the slack millennials aren't really stepping up right now but it's not too late you guys are in your mid-30s gen z i hope we step up 
We're about to find out if we do. Is that you're technically Gen Z? Yeah, I'm in okay. the middle of Gen Z. I don't. These things don't mean anything to me, but I know. I know. I think I'm technically a millennial. So yeah, you are. All right. Whoa. Thirty six. Yeah, you're a millennial. He might be forty six now. <laughs> Fifty six. <laughs> How much? I got a little. I can keep going a bit. <laughs> Sixty six. <laughs> Um, no, fair point. So when you talk about these things, like if I were to, and I was kind of already doing it to both of you guys, um, you know, I say older people and they all suck younger people. They all suck. you guys are both part of those groups, but also your own individuals at the same time. So I can, I actually prefer when I'm like, tell me the truth about my generation. I want the truth. So thank you for that. I think you guys have the, 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 um, uh, moral superiority here to a degree when it comes to the other generations in that, yeah, you were handed a super fucked up deck of cards through no fault of your own. I, I feel like I was too, but I mean, I don't know. Were you? Uh, I think the argument can be made. Yeah, I, I think every it can be made uh, any age group. I, I think uh, the biggest problem we have is it's it's the political situation we're in. And uh, it's the, you know, the politicians right now are just, they're just so dishonorable. So, I mean, you have a better perspective than any of us, and I wasn't there, and you were, and I trust it. Like, what, it's the, the politics has gone downhill, the corruption <laughs> has gotten worse, you're well, saying? Yeah, well, look at look at what happened at Watergate, how that was the worst thing. In, in <laughs> the minds of the media, that's the worst thing that's ever happened. Well, I think what I was, is, was it always going on, and we're just finding out? Well, I think there's that, too. Social media does help. But I think now it's gotten to the point it's more egregious. I think ever since... Uh, Bill Clinton was in office. I think things started to tip a bit. And then uh, I think when, when Obama got in, uh, I think things fell off into the abyss. And mainly because the media, I think at that point in time, we, we could see that they were really on, on the side so of the So would you witnessed um, like, uh, there we are, a, um, a, a capture of the media by a, a malicious force over time, over your lifetime? Well, I, th I think it was a graduation. And I think... Uh, if you look at any country on the planet, I think the the media in every every country is uh, is liberal, and uh, I think uh, they get rewarded for that, and they think that I, they feel they're part of the power structure that way. Even though when the dominoes start to fall down the road, maybe ten years from now, if we keep going to where we are, mm -hmm. they don't understand that they're going to be part of the dominoes getting crushed. Yes, so and you've that, read those thing. books. Well, you've that, been it, seen well, it probably. It's logic, it's common yeah. sense, and and uh, they just don't think they're going to be touched. That's not true. Well, I think it's our job to start studying the works of Saul Alinsky and um, Herbert Marcuse or whatever his close enough, name, whatever his name I get, is. I'm with you. Like we need to win. So how about we start studying their strategy, applying radical methods of institutional takeover to conservative principles. It's also finding ways to defeat them when with they're using the same tactics. That's a good point. Careful when fighting monsters, lest you become a monster. Well, stare long enough into the abyss. The abyss stares also back into you. You are not going to have any concerns about that, nor should you. You're supposed to be the guy that oversteps on the side of staring in the abyss. Do you, Shafe, are the young guys staring into the abyss a little too hard with this talk of... I think it's, we're in a dangerous place right now. I really do. And I think the, this, this election, our last t 10 elections, this is the most important election ever. It might be this time. And, Not and, that I didn't hear you, but you really do feel that way. Yeah, Having yeah. seen everything you've seen, this is the one. And this is it's, it's our country is in worse condition right now than it has ever been in my lifetime. Okay. Politically, it's just the the, the decisions that are being made are 180 degrees out of phase to what should be being done. Do you have any suspicions that that's on purpose? Yeah, absolutely. Be do you have any suspicions of who that faction or factions is? Who is at the top of that? Well, I think locally, I think that, that uh, Barack Obama is, is the president right now. Okay. He is. And uh, I think the, the globalists, absolutely. The, you know, the, the, the climatologists and, and on and on with that. So I think there are a lot just of people so, Just in to keep us um, on the same language, a lot of this process over the next months is getting us all to speak the same language. So you say globalist. Danny, have you heard the term globo homo? <laughs> yeah. So not homosexual, homogenization. Homogenous. Yes. So mm -hmm. there's a faction that seems to want to homogenize. Mm -hmm. So is that, Shafe, what you mean when you say globalist? 
I guess we could go that route. We know that. Well, if you don't, one, Claire, like let's no. let's speak the same language and use the same words no, no, for I, things. I agree with that, but uh, you know, I just think there's an effort out there by. It's almost like the Illuminati type uh, crowd. You know, they're out there and they see themselves as the elite and they should be ruling. And, you know, this isn't the first time in the world this has happened right. you know, over our history. Right. Which is really important. But uh, now you what, say what Illuminati said type, not to, but so do you, you, do you use Twitter? Do you use 4chan or politically? Do you use any of that stuff? I, do, I use Twitter. Okay. Um, uh, so YouTube, you've seen obviously. other people yeah. mention those conspiracies. Did you? Were, I've read about them too. Well, I, like, I, did you have them before you read about them? Like in 19, I don't know. 75 well i don't know that, that we have to actually put a name <laughs> like illuminati on something we no but i mean like before are. the internet like so so a lot of the conspiracies i know about and the ones i think are I true and you. but i picked them up from reading mostly the internet in so my day-to-day -day life the average person doesn't really seem to talk about that kind of stuff when you're just interacting with them day to day Although that's changed, but like you know, so before there was the internet, you were walking down the I don't know, you go into a gas station. I mean, do people? I think there's some of that, but I also I understand where you're coming from there. That maybe it's not as profound as we think it is, but I think uh, once all this information got put in one big vat and then distilled into different uh, mm -hmm. pathways, then yes, people could see more forthright uh, what was going on. I mean, the internet's a blessing and a curse. It it's is. it's it almost killed us it might end up saving us i think we need mm -hmm. to learn how to use it the right way um which is in my opinion to some degree connecting that we all happen to be physically in the same place but there's so many mm -hmm. people out there all right so and did you danny have any do you feel this sinister sort of not in a funny or goofy but like is there a secret group in control well i mean i don't really know who besides just like I mean, you have the international investment bankers that are able to manipulate mm -hmm. global governments around the world. You have people like the World Economic Forum, where simultaneously U.S. officials, European officials, Chinese officials all get to meet up in one place and propose absolute garbage plans like mm -hmm. the 2030 agenda with um, the whole overpopulation crisis. Like, come on, guys, we are below replacement, right? Do you like stop drinking the Kool-Aid? Wake up. <laughs> well, wait the heck up i censor myself yeah yeah no for a second but just look at the southern border for example what was that oh, oh i just missed my button sorry <laughs> just look at the southern border for example it's there is fighting aged males that are continuously flooding over the border with no rhyme or reason to where they come from you're talking about ethnicities that are not latin american or from the global south american region right it's you have chinese individuals you mm -hmm. have on purpose yeah it's you can't tell me that something is not wrong here that something bigger isn't at play here it's there is something bigger than us do you believe Elon Musk's sort of public theory that it's as simple as the Democrats trying to create a permanent voter base? I don't know that it's just simple as trying to create a permanent voter base. While that's one of the benefits, yeah. I mean, I think the long-term ramification isn't just a loyal voter base. It's the destruction of the United States of America. Do you think Elon Musk is on, quote-unquote, our side? Or is he part of this bread and circuses show? I don't know. I'm very skeptical of somebody who has that much wealth and influence i'm very skeptical i would like to hope he's on our side but i, I don't have an opinion on it i'm skeptical. i mean i i think that for me saving myself from even wasting time thinking about that is if this is all truly just a show like matrix level shit we're fucked anyway so what's the point like if i'm really in the matrix right now i'm so owned it's like i don't so i'm just gonna assume that that's not the case that we have a chance that they don't totally control everything and that it's worth fighting for yeah i don't think they control everything yet they're certainly trying to yeah. they control every major institution that well matters. one thing it's that also nice. seems to historically derail these sorts of people is that as they gain more and more control then there's fewer and fewer people in power and then they start to kind of want to fight each other Right, and you just suddenly you get down to these ten powerful whatever, and then they're like, eh, "I think I'm a little more powerful than you," and they self destruct a little bit. I mean, that happens repeatedly through history. Mark Antony right. and Augustus. Exactly. So it might this might all solve itself without us really ever getting involved. Like, uh, I mean, I feel like it's possible tomorrow that you find out like Hillary Clinton shot Gavin Newsom or something. <laughs> like, I don't know. I 
I'm a little more skeptical of that. I mean, I think they they work in lockstep for the most part. They I are mean, incredibly good at yes. staying on the same page when it matters. I mean, look at the Democratic block in the House of Representatives. I mean, almost yep. unanimously, they vote down the party line. Do you line. think they uh, achieve that by mutually assured destruction through weird blackmail shit? I think it is mutually like, how assured do they, destruction. That's how they well, stay together? So not necessarily blackmail, but the pay to play structure of the house. I mean, the Republican party and the democratic party alike in our national legislature have a pay to play structure where you have to pay your dues. And if you don't, they'll primary you out. So if you want to keep your job, you got to keep up with the payments to the, um, NRCC and then like whatever you the get, democratic has anybody is. approached you yet? No, I mean, my, my race doesn't matter nearly as much as these bigger races. My race is to strictly nominate President Trump as the Republican nominee. We don't have the big money influence in that. I mean, the Republican Party, specifically in PA, is kind of a dilapidated bus stop in the middle of nowhere. We don't even have a headquarters. So, really? I, yeah, no, there's no permanent headquarters for the PA GOP. I do like what we have going on in our specific area. I think we've got some interested people taking action from all different ages and walks of life and i think in the next few months here it's gonna start getting really cool and the, but go ahead the thing that we need to do then is take like these motivated enclaves throughout i mean specifically western and central pennsylvania we are not adequately represented by the elites that run the party from mm -hmm. the philadelphia and harrisburg area of the state and we need to be able to like kind of mechanize our different groups like these rural counties and get them to move in lockstep against the elites that run the party do you like what is the registered voter split in the entire state do you happen to know that i think it's about three hundred thousand difference between oh, yeah, democrats right. and that's Republicans. right because uh, scott yeah, presser close. was just but I, I mean what i've heard and what i've found out is that there's a lot of independence and there's mm -hmm. quite a lot of at least pennsylvania democrats that might even be sort of leaning you know, I mean, there's at lots the very of, least not happy with what the Democrats are doing. I mean, even in my home county of Jefferson County, there's a lot of registered Democrats that consistently vote for Republican candidates. And it's oh. I just I don't know what implores them to stay registered. I don't get it way. either, man. <laughs> but nonetheless, they're <laughs> in our boys. corner. I talk to so many people that say, oh, I'm a Democrat. And I'm like, well, what do you what do you believe in? What do you like? And then two minutes in there, I'm like, you're a Republican. That's all the yeah. stuff you care about is. And then there's just like this one goofy thing that that throws them off and makes them vote for some ridiculous stuff that's against 99% of their own interests. I don't I don't really get it. You if look I, like you have a thought, Shafe. Yeah, if I could grab you back and sorry to go back in time, no, no. but uh, the, uh, Danny mentioned something about the border there. If you remember when Obama was a president, his his big push was to completely transform America. And how, what other way would it be easily transferable but to bring in millions and millions and millions of people and then transform it that way that that's why I'm, I'm convinced that he's if he's not running the show he's right there at the table with susan rice did you see how his chef died a little while back in the it's like the clintons now people just fall off the boat here are you a big mike believer do you know what i mean yeah <laughs> i'm not I, I just i i think she should be left alone i'm sorry i, I, I you know I, that's that goes beyond. Maybe it's my age. But what did you just say? <laughs> she should be left. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> she, no, she didn't. And she's not. No. I, I honestly, you know, I, I, I stay away from that joke for the so most part. But it makes me laugh. I do laugh yeah. at it. I've seen Photoshop pictures of this. <laughs> like, Come on, you know, they got better use of your time than. <laughs> uh, we did have some uh, super chat skis here. I want to grab real quick. Uh, and then we're probably getting kind of close. What is <laughs> You guys always use weird letters and stuff. And I don't realize what I'm reading until halfway through it. There were books like Behold a Pale Horse by William Cooper back in the day. It was luck if you picked it up. The internet was their paranoid way to control us. But like many best laid plans. Dot, dot, dot. Yeah, so. I, I don't know. I do get this feel that sort of... Um, Things happen that are mostly not controlled, and then over a few decades, people like to try to take credit for those things that they didn't actually have anything to do. I think we have a lot of freedom still. I think there's mm -hmm. a lot of chances. I think there's a lot we can do. So, And then Pill doesn't have the uh, supers. Let me get this back to regular live chat. I should have pulled up the chat. Sorry, guys. All right, starting <laughs> with David Olerking. Big Mike. 
<laughs> Need big mites my calf <laughs> for cow. Hey, I'm an old fart. What can I say, bud? We all have our different senses of humor, and us young guys, it's Need real big, fucked up. Need Big Mike's workout. Real messed up sense of humor. We're sorry about that to some degree, but also not sorry about it. You guys have some real messed up jokes in your generation, and you know it. Don't ask me to tell one. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Some of the most messed up stuff I've ever heard has come out of guys your age's mouth. Well, things that were funny... Some 30, of that 40 years ago, you do well. I'm talking about it. some of that, you know, uh, Grand Torino, uh, <laughs> stack zipper heads like you seven feet high and use them for sandbags. When I was in the army, zipper stop. head was a year no, as it <laughs> What is that? Can I ask, where does that come from? It was, it was Vietnam. No, but, I know, but like, why? What is it? Would they, would they have zippers on their helmets? It was, it was at the eyes of the, uh, <laughs> of the Vietnamese, and uh, it was uh, derogatory. And their eyes don't look like zippers. Well, that, that's my understanding. They of look like very narrow eyes. No. That was my understanding. Do you know what I've read why Asians have narrow eyes? Is um, uh, to, uh, from evolving on the Mongolian steppes and the wind. So have you ever seen Eskimo snow goggles? Mm -hmm. You have? Yes. So their eyes just kind of did that. They became oh. slits because of the windiness. That's Could science. Be. Could be. <laughs> We know we can trust science. One of my favorite racist insults of all time is when I found out Native Americans used to call white people round eyes, as yeah. an insult. You fucking round eye. Yep. It's all it's all relative. <laughs> we were put upon. I can be either. I think I can bridge this gap and unite these tribes. <laughs> well, there's somebody who want to know my workout, so we we go off to, off topic. You're sitting there right now, bar. just like, why did I come to? Why am I here? What am I doing? Who is this guy? No. <laughs> I think you should make a muscle. Ah, uh, that's me. I can be whatever I want. I am free in all the ways you are not. I look like you want to look. I dress like you want it. Anybody know what I'm referencing right now? It's Fight Club. Come on. Fight Club. Tyler Durden. I'm Tyler Durden. I should get a title. Only my best title. This is Fight Club, isn't it? Robert Paulson. Look at that. Uh, I was just killing the last few minutes there. I think it is 12, no, 2. We got about 13 minutes to the break, but we do have this Zoom call set up we're going to do. We're going to have four, five, six, maybe even seven people call in and, and make a run at trying to do this true Congress. I want a way to have live conversations that are entertaining to watch and participate in for everybody and all my people are all over the country and world. Are you guys going to hang out for an hour or two? Yes, yeah, come here. There's a pretty good chance that this might all go horribly wrong. So be a part of it. <laughs> so be a part of it. But uh, I haven't even set up the Zoom meeting yet. So what I think I'm going to do here, it's about 10 till 3. I am going to go to break for five minutes or so, and then I will appear in the Gilded and get the relevant people the Zoom link, and we'll get that set up. So this might be closer to like a 15, 20 minute break than, what are you guys laughing at the chat? <laughs> it's the chat. 12. It's going, I don't want to know. Talking about a car problem. Uh, but so yes, do I get, this <laughs> is why I need someone else running this shit. I don't want to be saying this shit. I should have a pre-recorded little lead out. <laughs> All I'm getting at is that instead of the normal 10-minute break, this will probably be about a 20-minute break because the first 10 minutes is my normal break and the second 10 minutes will be me setting up this group call. We will be back roughly around 3.10 with ideally the Congress Live, and it's going to be a shit show in the best possible way. But for now, if I can get my volume... So many buttons, guys. So many buttons. There it is. I hear jungle. We'll be back in about 15 or 20 minutes with the Congress. We'll get all the chats. We'll see you then.
All right, we're going to be back here live in a second. All you congressional people joining me, don't worry, they cannot see you guys yet, but they'll be able to hear you in a second. And I am just getting everybody invited and into the room before I bring the camera back. So everybody uh, out there, go ahead and say hello. Uh, William Dodger, Midwest. Hi. Hello. Looks like it's working. Can you guys uh, in my studio hear them? You can? Okay. Uh, Moonchild is, I'm waiting on Moonchild. Alinda, love, you have an invite in Gilded as well. Uh, Kyle, third wave constitutionalist, you have an invite as well, and I believe that's everybody. So we're going to hang out here a moment longer uh, and let them uh, give them a chance to join here. But. Welcome back. I'm going to bring this jungle music off very abruptly, like a true professional would. A nice transition. And uh, what I really want to test out here is my congressional screen. First, I got to get my little, my little old button pusher. And uh, give me a second here, because that's currently set to Photoshop. Zoom meeting. And zoom, moment of truth. If I can remember the button. There we are. There we are. You guys are on. Can you see? You are, we're live. So Maximum Midwest, hello. William Maines and the Dodger MFR is with us. I see somebody else there at the top. Let me drop them into one of our fun experimental seats. Here we are. Oh, it's Kyle. It's Kyle in his dumb circle. <laughs> Kyle in his circle. Midwest. Kyle Hello. refuses to Maze. be a part of the actual room. He must remain <laughs> in a circle. Everybody in the actual chat, just confirm for us, if you will, that you can hear everybody. I have uh, sort of vetted these first experimental, uh, first space flight crew here because they've behaved themselves relatively well. Relatively. But starting from the left, let me get my uh, pointer off of there. That is uh, Dodger M. Effer. Say hello, Dodger. Hello, everybody. Tell us about, uh, you have some of your own platform and content. You want to plug that for a second here while I'm getting set up? Sure. No, I'm a, a lot of people know me. I do a different kind of digital art. You've been using a lot of them for your thumbnails and, and stuff like that. I'm on Severe Non's, uh music show nightly and yeah just just doing doing that kind of thing trying to help promote through visual arts you're a and, humble uh that kind of thing you're a humble bastard man you've done all the artwork for our show he's totally not saying any of that i'm i i'm the greatest that there <laughs> has been and, <laughs> <laughs> Dodger is on Pilled, a.k.a. Foxhole. Him and Severe Anon, I joined their show, and I'll be doing it again whether they want me to or not. But um, they have great content. I'm going to just sort of loosely call you the art crowd right now. Yeah, sure, we're kind sure. of the, the art table. Like, if you're serious about your craft and not just moving around or that kind of thing, we probably talk to me. Yeah, so what? Well, much more on Dodger, and he'll be joining us again. Next to him, that is William Maines, our storyboard artist for the film, and also does lots of strange car mechanical type things and forging yes, yep. and metal. Another maker, William. What's going on? Howdy, howdy. That, do you uh, want to? Nice to see you. Welcome. Can you hear me? Yeah, yeah, we can hear you good. All right. Loud and clear. Uh, yeah, I have my own channels called William's Channel on YouTube. I kind of post what I do, you know, like I posted my work videos there and stuff, but uh, I'm not that big, you know, I'm just, you know, just a scratcher. <laughs> and you are out on the West Coast, is that right? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, Northern Cali. Yeah. Cali. All right. Dodger, where are you? I forgot to ask. 
I'm in, I'm in North Texas, Dallas. North Texas, South Dallas. Dallas in the hood. To my fake left, your right, Maximum Midwest, welcome. Hi. Introduce yourself. Do you have, uh, are you, do you create your own content in any way? Uh, well, I have a couple of books out that published in Authors Guild, et cetera, so... All right, I got to. Um, that when we start doing this a little more seriously, I'll include all of your guys' links in the particular um, video that we're doing. I wasn't really sure how many of you assholes would show up. To tell you the truth, so I'm uh, pretty shy. Sure. <laughs> we uh, we all did this off the air last night as sort of a test. It was great, and then uh, thank you tremendously for joining. I think I was a little bit maybe unclear about that we were starting at three and not two. So I think maybe Moon might still jump in here, which I would love. Uh, and I think there was somebody else, but, um, so maximum Midwest for now is what we're calling you. Um, but you've, yeah. what, is your books published under that name? No, it's under, they're under CGAF. CGAF. Okay. Yeah. And that's your name yeah. in the, uh, Gilded, I believe. Right. Or no, you're maximum. Uh, yeah. <laughs> you got to pick one. It's maximum Midwest, but, uh, that's real name is CGAF. <laughs> okay. Without, uh, doxing yourself, where are you located? Out of curiosity. Missouri. Missouri. Okay. We are in Missouri. And I think we have you up on the uh, website under Missouri, right? Yes. And I think we have yes. William. I don't have Dodger yet for Texas, but I'll get that done after the show. On the far end there in the circle, too cool for the green screen. That's third wave constitutionalist, a.k.a. Kyle. What's going on, Kyle? What's going on? I am uh, not anybody on the internet. I have no links. I don't do any of that. Just a long time watcher, concerned citizen, and uh, just trying to somewhat do whatever part I can. Musician, builder, maker, mason. So that's about it. And if I sound like uh, Patrick Mahomes, I'm sick. So that blows. Are you, uh, when you say mason? Actual mason? Stonemason. Stone Mason. I know. Stonemason. I know. I, 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 I pick these up and put them down. Well, awesome for you guys. Uh, uh, thank you so for ha for coming on. Uh, of course, we're going to do a little bit of experimenting here this second hour. Um, but the whole idea of the Third Continental Congress is, of course, to be an actual Congress. And I know there's a lot of channels out there smaller than me. Everybody, even if you don't have a channel, tends to be, at least this year, interested, wanting to participate, have a story, a war story for the grandkids, whatever your motivation is. This certainly seems to be the year. Uh, and we're putting together instructions if you need them on how to get uh, to appear on here. You don't need a whole lot. It's very inexpensive. The Zoom program is free. Oh, you know what I didn't do, guys? I didn't you sign didn't up. Buy it. I didn't buy it. So we're going to get cut Last off. Ticket. I fucking oh, forgot. no. I forgot to do the paid version. After this oh, one, we'll have a <laughs> limited amount of time. But we did realize last night that it kicks us off after 45 minutes. And so it maybe even less. So that'll happen. You should get pretty close to the end. And we'll get close. We'll get close. So uh, you guys will know what happens when it happens, haven't? So at least you won't be confused, <laughs> nor will I. I will pay for it after this show, damn it, and then we won't worry about it ever again. But I kind of figured here we need to just do this and figure out how the hell we're going to not talk over each other and then how we're going to come up with some kind of way to meaningfully talk about what's going on and then, of course, a benefit to all of you if you have stuff you're selling or promoting or talking about or have channels. Every other channel I know of is trying to be in it for themselves, and so I don't want to do that. Uh, quickly, we can still switch between everybody except, yeah, okay, we're good. We are good. So, generationally, you guys are sort of roughly all over the same. I mean, did you guys all catch the first half of the show? Yeah. Yeah. Any and oh, there's somebody. There she is. Uh, there's Linda. Linda, you're getting in, you're putting you in the back. Or so why is this when you go back easy? <laughs> Linda's um invisible. She's back. There she is. Linda Love, welcome. Can you hear us? Yes. Where do you want to sit? Um, off in the corner. 
Only be up there. Linda Love is the moderator in the Gilded of the uh, Ask a Lady World Champion. It's a fantastic channel for chatting. She also might have frozen. All right, well, that's all. Uh -oh. oh, she's back. Linda, if you pop back into exist, oh, there you are. Can you? <laughs> can you hear anything? Buffering. We'll let you um, fumble around there in the back corner. But you can also use text chat to me if you're having an issue in, in Zoom. Just um, type it to me what the issue is that you're having, and I'll see if I can help you fix it. But so I, the, the, just off the top of my head, the way I envision this going is we'd sort of go through an hour of what's going on in the world and start there. And uh, if we want to get more specific than that, then we can. But since you all caught the first half of the show, you saw um, Danny, the young guy. And you saw Shafe, the uh, only slightly older guy, still a young guy, and me right in the middle. In your own lives, let me just start with Dodger to keep it uh, under control to a degree. I mean, do you have older friends, younger friends? What do you see? You're kind of in the middle like me. Yeah, I'm, a, I'm 43, and I come from a, it's Texas, so it's, it's conservative except for the metropolitan areas, but we're... I specifically come from is, is more lower income area and it's pretty rough and we're just waiting for the first little thing to pop off. Cause I mean, we all realize everybody's talking a big hot game and, and everybody's worried and stuff, but it's going to come to something kinetic. I I'm pretty sure, but it, it'll be quick and done. Like nobody wants violence. Nobody who's actually seen or been a part of violence wants that. Right. But everybody else who just grew up watching The Matrix and thinks that they're going to take their their little customized pistols with all the little bells and whistles and slow motion jump over a flaming barrel, that ain't, ain't going to happen. That's not that's not what violence is. So you uh, you don't want it, but you feel it coming. I feel it coming, and I mean I'm not a, I'm not opposed to it. Like I, you can't like at a certain point words fail. Right in my world, like I'm, I'm covered with scars because of that. And well, we've discussed before, I mean, um, you know, I feel like the decision has been taken. Whether or not it gets violent is not up to us. That's how it feels to me. Mm -mm. It's how we react to it. But, there, but we have to react. We can't just sit on our hands and pray we make it to November, I don't think. Yeah. That's just my opinion, though. William, how do you feel about it? Yes, sir. Uh, yeah, I, I come from a, a small town. Just, I mean like 1800 people and it it feels like we're in a bubble right now like just like Dodger Dodge says it, it feels like there's it it's just coming about yeah, eight, like I mean, something. yeah, eighteen hundred. About like Danny and uh, in in Punxsutawney. Did did you know kind of the older and younger? Did you have a similar sort of experience growing up, where you sort of actually are connected to your community a little bit more? Yes. Yeah. 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 Our our community here is is very connected. We're we're it's it's a still a very good town that we live in. I mean, the schools are decent, and it's just yeah. And we're only like 80 miles from Sacramento. So it's like, it's kind of strange, you know, because you see all of that, the, all, the, all of what's going on is like right there. If you're, you know, mm -hmm. just. Yeah, small town in California. You feel the tension. Yeah. Are there like, I mean, I've heard that there's quite a few conservatives in California. Um, kind yeah. Of. Oh, yeah. I mean, I, I work and live here and it's mostly mostly conservative that i met oh hold on a second i'm seeing a um technical issue and i know what it is i know what it is sorry guys let me shut off zooms uh yeah i am so sorry about that i should have been reading the chat but it should be fixed now Um, so if you could in the chat, please confirm that, uh, that is fixed. Yes, you're correct. Bear, bear. That was exactly what was going on. Um, okay. I'm sorry for cutting you off there, William. Oh, no worries. Uh, I believe we should only be hearing one copy of the audio, but I'll keep an eye on the chat. So, so, um, 
conservative enclave in California. There actually, you said there are true uh, quite a bit of conservatives in California. Yes. Oh, yes. Yeah. I mean, uh, we have uh, Doug LaMoffa is our representative for this area. And I mean, he's he is a, a farmer out here. I mean, he's it, he's a real he's a real guy. But, you know, he, I mean, he, he does a pretty decent job representing us i mean i kind of feel like california seems a bit like pennsylvania and that the majority of the state sounds kind of like that but then you have these um urban centers that sort of dominate the poly in our case it's philadelphia right and for the most part but um is it like that as well like you have this giant blue city controlling everything and then around yes okay it's 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 really down south like you know the whole la area that it, it's like a big red or a big blue blob down there. And they, and it's like they pass laws for them down there in a city that it, I mean, I've been down there. It's smoggy. It's crappy. I, I agree. They probably should stop using so much gasoline or whatever they, whatever they want to do. They need to stop whatever they're doing, you know, but up here it's, it's not like that. They're, I've heard North, yeah, laws. like Northern. Isn't there even like this secession meme about Northern California? Uh, yes, yes. The uh, they want to split in it, split it in half, and the North half be the state of Jefferson. That's right, and Jefferson. Then, yeah, that's right. Yes. Mm-hmm. Very cool. Oh, I got stickers, stickers on my inside of my service truck for that. <laughs> like I got the great seal of. Oh, so you're a you're a Jeffersonian. You're yes, sir. Right on. <laughs> All right, I'm going to move on from you for a second, but we'll come back. Maximum Midwest, did you uh, grow up in Missouri, or is that just where you ended up? I did. I moved around a little bit, but not much. I grew up in northern Missouri, live in northern Missouri. All my family's in northern Missouri, so pretty much 100% Missourian. (laughs) Your immediate surroundings growing up, was it small town, big city, somewhere in between? Very small. Like, we're... Um, in this area, the, the town's pretty much 2000 people, a little over okay. some areas, uh, I, pretty uh, much mainly conservative. Yeah. Okay. Okay. And I appreciate you and Linda as well. And I'll talk to you here in a second, Linda, but the whole woman's side of things, female side of things, I, is not something I really know about, but I'm, I'm, and also not you, if you're male in here, you don't have to have only male opinions. <laughs> if you're female, you don't have to be some champion of female opinions. I'm not trying to do that. But just because you have a perspective, I don't. Uh, I can certainly tell you what it was like growing up as a guy. How have you seen the world change in your experience as a woman? Is is it? Uh, well, I mean, I see a lot of different opinions. I feel like I'm kind of in the middle of liberal opinions and conservative opinions because Um, and, and I'm a creator also very creative person, artist, writer. So I have a lot of friends that are fairly liberal, but I, I've noticed like a middle of the road liberal. Like, I don't, I don't know that many people who are far left, but I do, I do feel like I have to pay attention to what I'm posting on Facebook or else I will get screamed it at. Affects, you know? and I yeah. Get, so you got to kind of be careful like, about what you say you're saying. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, generally everybody knows my opinions cause I'm not, I'm not super quiet about them, but like when I'm posting on Facebook or I don't do a whole lot with Twitter, but Facebook more, more than anything. Yeah. Oh, I mean, I but feel your I pain. Yeah. Noticed, I have noticed that there are things that I can post about and things that I can't get by with, you know what I mean? Like, I, I don't talk about my opinions on like abortion and stuff like that, because I know that somebody's going to have a problem. And that's a that's, you know, not saying males shouldn't have an opinion on that, because I definitely believe that in father's rights and, and males should have opinions on those sort of things. But um females will jump on my case about that like big time well you have a a great example of that is this um do you i don't know if you follow girls basketball i honestly really don't either but because it's been in the news caitlin clark this uh basketball player who's white uh, and i guess is doing pretty well 
and the vitriol and just nastiness she is getting from other women is off the charts. Oh yeah, it's it's way worse. Women fussing at well, other women. I think some of our like, uh, men, yeah, some of the uh, us us guys but, are surprised to find out how mean you are to each other. Oh yeah, oh <laughs> yeah. Women are evil to each other, and I can't. And a lot of times it's behind closed doors. Like you don't hear about it until sure. you hear about it from somebody else. Oh, all the rumors <laughs> and things. So as a concern, I mean, I imagine. It's got to be kind of brutal that you're, most women or your group, I mean, wouldn't they, I would imagine, be liberal or leaning more liberal or consider themselves more liberal than consider? Is that not true? I don't know. Um, I don't know. I would say there's a good mix. Like, like do you, of your friends, are they a, a decent number of them, you'd say, are also conservative? Yeah, I, I mean, I, but I'm conservative, so I kind of surround myself with like-minded Fair individuals, enough, yeah. but the artist crowd, I feel like it's more, um, the, the artist crowd and, and stuff like that, that I'm in is more liberal leaning, but then you get on the other side with the more intellectual, um, I, I don't know, more work crowd, you know, cause I, I work at our high school you know, high school, elementary school in town. Oh, and by the way, I did want to say like in uh, as a rule, you know, school worker, um, there is a biblical verse in almost every classroom in in our town. So like there's not always that left leaning bias, at least in the rural areas. So makes sense. Well, thank you. And we'll have. Uh... I don't know what that was. We'll get into much more detail, but just in the interest of introducing everybody here at the beginning, Linda Love, and since we're talking about women and things like, you can hear me, right, Linda? Yes. So you run the Ask a Lady World Champion channel in the Gilded, which is awesome. Linda. <laughs> Linda. Um, Linda, what's that cloud of smoke, I Linda? I you ask me a question. <laughs> it was my light. It was my light. There's like candlestick lights on the ceiling and it was falling down like smoke. So I made sure there's no lights today. I don't know Do what's happening at your place, Linda, but I'm willing to bet you don't either. <laughs> Do you see that? I'm smiling at you. I can't see anything. So the Lady World Champion channel is not just a place for the women to talk to each other, but also for, for guys like myself and some of the, I think the old guys probably have you all figured out, I hate to say. But a lot of us younger guys are still trying to figure you out. Um, and you've, I really want to encourage, um, I don't know, you've sort of promised, Linda, to not mess with any young guys that ask for advice. <laughs> on uh being a man in this society in m maximum Midwest i feel like i'm more manly of the women like not girly well so i don't so. think you're manly at all but there's um a sort of courage that is usually associated with being masculine that i think both you ladies have just to, to be on here it's it's um what's really interesting and moonchild is is not here i think i i messed her up by telling her it was a two not three but we have almost a 50-50 male-female split of the people that get involved in stuff like this, which I find super interesting, and I don't know why that is. But um, you're obviously chilling on Sunday and taking it easy on your day of rest, and I'm giving you some good nature fun. But we've known each other for quite a while. I think you're an excellent uh, addition to our team, and when you, when you feel like being a little more serious, you give a lot of great advice, and I appreciate that. Right now, you seem high as fuck. I made sure to not smoke today. I didn't smoke <laughs> anything all day. I'm just super nervous. I can't I know. it. And then I, I know. So that's so why I'm, I'm making it as be... horrible as possible for you to help you deal with that nervousness. <laughs> Thank you. No, I really do appreciate it. And um, that. And so there's also an Ask an Old Boy channel, uh, which is the equivalent. But advice from the older to younger generation in the gilded which is like discord if you don't know but thank you for joining us linda and your stuff seems to be working so that's great are you on a phone quickly yeah. are you on a phone again yes oh so it works yeah. there we go all right moving over to kyle aka third wave constitutionalist aka the circle jerk that's right you got it what's your deal 
How have you? You you're not a famous, world famous now, internationally recognizable brand like John Ward is. What are you doing here? <laughs> well, I've been everywhere. Born in Cali, raised in Texas, ended up in Mass when I was like twelve, and uh, I've never. Uh, I've never given two shits about what I say, right, wrong, or indifferent. And uh seems like I don't know, just whenever I stumbled upon uh, you know, your stuff, it's just it's perfect. It's unapologetic. It's uh so you know, it's fre- it's fresh air. So I just figured I'd do my best to to do whatever I can, throw out some ideas. I think uh as I've said in uh, Gilded Land, land is where it's at. You know, for instance, Pennsylvania, he said it doesn't have a, a headquarters. Get two acres of land, you know, start, you know, we got to start ground roots. Two acres ain't much. Everybody can afford it. Um, but, you know, as, as far as everybody and how they feel, I'm not, I'm not worried about a damn thing. And in the end, there's more of us than there are them. We don't even need weapons. You, you get two million people to march up on a, on on anything, and you're taking it over. You know, your brothers ain't gonna want to shoot everybody, unarmed people. So, don't really know where to take it from there. I am high as fuck. I will say. <laughs> so, shoot. I mean, uh, le- legitimate <laughs> thoughts for being high as. This again is the year where we're. I, I'm all about freedom, maybe more than anything else, individual freedom. I see where you're coming from. What's interesting to me is, like me, you sort of have been sitting there not giving a shit, which I don't blame you, and honestly, is probably the right way to do it. And yet, here you are getting involved. To some degree, something might must must give you a reason to feel the need to do that. I would think. Well, uh, I I just can't believe how fucking stupid we've gotten in such a short amount of time. Uh, I mean, e- even, even these liberals, you know, like I, I deal with very wealthy people. I live, you know, if, I don't know if Linda's ever been to Duxbury, Plymouth kind of Kingston area over here on the South shore mass. But I mean, it is, it's, it's like the Kennedys. All right. Yeah. So, you know, they have the, the signs on in their lawn that say like, hate has no home here and get rid of guns and everything. And I have no problem talking to him. My boss hates it. He hates it, but he can't fire me because then, you know, he's fucked. So (laughs) you're essential. I get into it with, with these rich liberals. And, uh, you know, I remember one of them, she don't talk to me anymore, but during the election, when she was talking about immigrants, you know, I told her how I, I told her how I felt about it. because how you felt the same. Yeah, I've been getting paid the same for almost 20 years because they keep wages down. And I'm like, hey, listen, lady, my my sister, who's dead now, uh, she was half Mexican. OK, and uh, we drive by construction sites and she would yell "migra" out the window just to get them, all, you know, get them all spooked. But, uh, you know, everybody's just such a pussy now. You can't even talk with them. You, you can't, I mean, just the fact that you got people going along with the cult of like a uh, woman is anybody that identifies as a woman. It's just, you know, shut up, you know, let it out, leaves it, let it out, keep going. But, but we know, we know if you ask these same freaking people 20 years ago, Hey, uh, you know, I, I let my hair down. So I'm a woman. They'd be like the fuck you are, you know what I mean? Like. So I don't know. I'm just, uh, I'm, I, I feel like my place here would be the land pusher, you know, get maybe a once a year kind of thing started where everybody can meet up. And I think that would be I, awesome. I don't, I don't really know what, what your whole idea for a process is, but I would almost hope that it, it's something along the lines of pretty much demolishing the Republican Party and, you know, just constitution or nothing. You know what I mean? Just constitution or nothing. Make it uh, actually make sense again. Exactly. Follow the actual and rules. Uh, Behave fairly. Yeah, and, and, <laughs> and let's not be stupid. You know what I mean? Oh. It's it's like the whole the the gun thing. Okay, well, you know, somebody drunk driving killed somebody, so let's take everybody's driver's license right. and cars away. Yeah, there was a shooting. Let's so, take the guns. So that's where I'm at. 
just fight idiocracy. I mean, well said and from the heart. And uh, I mean, I, I, I got no fault with anything you said. And I'm really glad you're with us. Uh, I don't find anything strange about how you are, how you act, or the way you say things. Uh, there is an American culture that we don't get credit for. And it's probably going to be a few hundred years before anybody really acknowledges it as uniquely an American culture. But you, my friend, are that culture. I like to think I am somewhat myself. And uh, absolutely everybody here. And of course, that we're also very different in lots of ways, I assume, in just this tiny little group of six people. But it certainly seems to be like uh, that we all agree there's a problem uh, and that we're willing to work together in across the vastly different shit that we do and the way we say things and where we are and what we care about. Maybe, I'm not trying to put words in anybody's mouth, but we all want to regain control of our own little local homelands and then possibly connect that into, I totally agree, like a central, almost sort of, uh, we need our own mecca, you know, so to speak. Yep. Um, I don't think that's a ridiculous thing. I think that as cool as the internet is, nothing will ever replace or be as fundamental as physically going to the same place together. Uh, so I'd be all for that. And believe it or not, I'm really working on that project already. So, and I think a lot of people are, if we keep talking and finding each other, it'll happen. But I got a warning that I'm running out of time, uh, which all is right. about right. I might just kick you guys off here. So we have a somewhat elegant exit and everybody got a chance to sort of say a little bit. And uh, uh, hopefully you felt accurately forewarned that it would be a bit all over the place with no plan and it was but it was great you guys are great the gilded to join the gilded uh, the link is in the description of this video and every other video you'll get a little waiting for approval thing um that's just to keep robots from joining it we will approve you usually within a day or so and then if you're familiar with discord piece of cake if not it's just a bunch of chat rooms that are organized by theme and age and whatever we can make your own room for you if you want but this whole three cc is uh let me pull it up here real quick uh i think i have most of you guys on it already do 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 here it is uh yes so in pennsylvania that's me and the deacon william mains out here dodger i'll get you added to texas but uh maximum midwest you're in there you guys can't see any of that can you you no. just you just see me. Nope. Yeah, we didn't. Can't see it. We haven't quite figured that out yet. You know, I said after we were done yesterday that I was gonna sit down and figure all this stuff out. I didn't. You didn't. Yeah. <laughs> did you get high, John? I didn't do that. No, I actually did work. I did work. I'll have an excuse to if I want to get high here this month because I got to write an entire film script. Um, which I got, I got to have a chat with you, William and Dodger, and some of you other guys. That, so we have some news there. That's moving in the right direction. Awesome. Yeah. Based. But uh, because of this warning and because this went really well and everybody's already talked, I'm going to end this call. Thank you for joining me. We'll reconnect in Gilded. I'm going to probably in a few hours because I'm going to watch all this again. But this is awesome. Please keep coming back. Please, if you create stuff, send me those links so I can promote you guys even to this one. And then Dodger, you and I will talk about getting back on with Severe, maybe this week or something. Love it. Can't wait, man. Awesome. Thank you so much, guys. Bye. Thank you Thanks, so everybody. much. Bye. Bye. Um, I'm going to go get Bye. Bye. Uh, End meeting for all. See ya. See ya. How was that interaction? You... Oh, shit. I could have done it. I did set it up. Oh, you guys need microphones, don't you? That probably were you talking during that and realizing that I had you off and then just you just gave up? Oh, no, okay. I heard I heard Shafe make some comments, but I really, really did that poorly, although it was mostly accurate. I I mostly got it. The double audio will be funny to watch back for like the, the John Belushi guy. He was he was spot on. What? You know, the hood. What? You're not plugged in. <laughs> That is also my fault. About three weeks now, I've known I need a 25-foot XLR cable so that people don't have to do this to get to their seats. I used to, I, I used to run audio two years ago. <laughs>
Not that audio. I should have turned you down there so we didn't get that pop either. Hopefully yeah, we didn't that, blow out anybody's ears, eardrums. But well, the uh, fellow that looks, uh, to me, looked like John Belushi. I got a <laughs> John Belushi vibe out of him, and uh, he was very passionate. And he made some good points. There's, um, it's always in a, everybody has their own language and way of talking about mm -hmm. it. There's some overlap if people use, so, you know, or watch the news, then they'll tend to use the same language. But I think a lot of people have yeah. good thoughts on this mm -hmm. stuff. Um, they they pay you, attention and then yes. Well, a lot of people on the right, especially like the <laughs> official, you know, um, very polished up suit wearing right, would write those people off at the first F word or something and not really listen to them. They just don't listen. That's the whole deacon, awesome co-host uh, co of my show. He's a welder. People in suits wouldn't listen to him long yeah. enough to hear how much cool stuff he has to say. Not cool, but like valid, worthwhile, scientific, let's solve the problem type shit. It's so, a lack of respect. It, it just is. And so this is why it's cool to have this kind of age rage here and then the res respect going in all directions, but also Danny having enough respect to say, John, your generation sucks. How about you pick up the slack a little bit? And then me having enough respect to say, you ain't fucking wrong, man. You're not wrong. You're not wrong. And I'm trying. And then... I, my shit rolls uphill to you. It's like in uh, Saving Private Ryan, right? So it's you all gripe, my fault. Gripes go uphill. <laughs> so you're my captain. Like a, like oh, a... captain, my captain. Why did you do all this, Shafe? Why are you personally responsible for the way the world is? Well, because I work out, I can carry the weight. <laughs> the guilt. That should be your sign-off line. Because I work out, I, I carry the, the weight. weight. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> So we're at, uh, just so you guys know, 3.40. We have 20 official minutes of time left if we want to use it up. We actually managed to get all the way through this without really talking about the news at all. Any um, relevant news stories to your... Okay, well, let me say, your campaign is coming up here pretty quick, right? Yeah, the elections is April 23rd. Oh, really quick? It. Yeah, okay. so wow. it's very close. And I mean, in the grand scheme of primaries, it's a pretty late primary, though, for a presidential year. I mean, once again, Pennsylvania, one of the most populous states in terms of, like, bulk of electoral votes, were one of the last decide. We're not even mm -hmm. a deciding factor in the presidential mm -hmm. primary system. How, if late, somebody yeah. wants to support you anyway... How, they, how do they vote for you? Um, live within Pennsylvania's 15th congressional district. That's number one. Which is where? Um, so it's massive. It's a third of the size. It's like a third of Pennsylvania. You know what I can do here, Danny? Pull up a map. Yeah. <laughs> I, I can tell you it stretches from like Venango County, Oil City, all the way to Williamsport in Lycoming County. And that's like a four-hour drive across the district. I remember you showing me this before, and I was like, oh, I feel City, bad for you. And then we go all the way from the New York border down to the bottom of Armstrong County, close to Allegheny County. Is it this? Yeah. That's your district. Yep. And we are sitting in the more southern eastern portion. Not yeah. The most southeast. I'd be Snyder and Union County, but we're pretty close to southeast. If you live in this zone, I got Danny's, uh, where is it? There he is on Twitter. Where's my mouse? I don't know if you can see my mouse or not, but at Danny, it's just his name with an underscore. You guys can put that together. If you're if you're a Democrat and looking for him, it's under Danny Kunzelzer. Just change M A N to X I R. You'll find him. Um, okay, I got you there. So yes, uh, what is the date again? Twenty third. April twenty third. April twenty third. If you live here, get in touch with this gentleman right here. Say, I want you to vote Trump for me on my behalf. Correct? I have that yep. fairly accurate? Yep. I'm committed to President Trump at the convention. Awesome. All right. And then uh, you, Shafe, I uh, had fully intended to give you some value out of giving me your time today. <laughs> Let me get your uh, channel up. You are in the process of sort of rebranding all of this because you've been spending, you've been on this. Um... I, I, I was, uh, I've been doing this a lot of years and, uh, Three or four of my clients are, are my age, and uh, they did the smart thing, and they retired. And because of that, uh, a lot of my business went away. And quite <laughs> frankly, it's, it's it's probably time. But uh, you, you have... know, I, I still want to keep busy, and I still have the talent and, and the, the get up and go. Hopefully, before it gets all the way I'm gone. Your scrapple video is popular. Yeah, that's a that's a good friend of mine uh, does this uh, work and makes scrapple. And for some reason, uh, people just uh, love that video. Um. Yeah. For the, those who don't know what Scrapple is, quickly. Scrapple is the uh, everything that's left from the pig that n most people don't want or want to eat. So uh, toenails and teeth and 
eyeballs and uh, tails, things like that. So he put it together with a bunch of grain and, and uh, flowers, and, and, and it actually tastes pretty good when it's fried. It, yeah, is it um, German? Like, where did that come uh, I think, from? Yeah, Scottish, I think maybe? I think it's probably like the Pennsylvania Dutch influence or the Amish or whatever. Like a but Amish it's all, haggis? It's, it's farm family stuff. That's yeah. really, really uh, what it is. I have heard that before, but that is a, a Pennsylvania thing, isn't well, it? Well, the, the farmers would get together at the end of, uh, say, in November, and they'd slaughter their hogs. And then they'd uh, obviously, obviously butcher them and put the meat where they wanted. And then there was some leftovers there. And so those leftovers were put together and a bunch of families would get together and help make scrapple. And if, and uh, it actually is pretty tasty, but it is, there's nothing in it that's healthy. You don't want to see it being made, maybe, is what the... Or, or but, um, You have this super professionally produced stuff. It's almost like you've been going around hanging out with your friends and being like, why don't I just make this really high quality documentary for you? Is well, that... Well... Are you talking about with you? Or well, I mean, no, no. Or? I mean, like the, the videos you have up, Chris. So I was trying to say is you're going to be like redoing a lot of how all this looks and is organized and maybe even the name of the channel. Yes. And, and what I'm probably going to do is move on to uh, other creative things and uh, maybe uh, original content. Yes. Yeah, true, really... uh, true YouTuber type stuff. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Original content content is really where uh, that's where the money is and, and the satisfaction. But I mean, you have all these really cool. And then, of course, like you said, the locations for the film because you've already filmed there to some degree and stuff oh there we go you have quite a bit more than yeah a lot of stuff okay yeah i've got uh i do a lot of things with the coaches versus cancer at yeah State too. that's a big one of mine and um i'm on the board there but uh, there are uh, a lot of uh, corporate clients i have some uh some uh commercial clients as well and uh, realtors that i've worked with over the years but uh you know things in this business and you knew you know yourself change so fast yeah not, not only the equipment, but uh, the needs. I are, I, I've relearned so many things already in five mm -hmm. years. It's like I can't even imagine. Well, I'll tell you something else that impacted all our business is is uh, when COVID came through, companies had to find new ways to communicate. And so Zoom became really big. And it really, I don't think it's really recovered from there uh, as far as, uh, say, corporate producers like myself. Because they the, the companies would just say, well, we can get this done for free, free on Zoom, where we can meet uh, 14 people across the country and do sales. And, you know, there's nothing like face-to-face uh, -face work, but uh, Zoom is really, it's a lot cheaper than... You got any Zoom tips in. for me? <laughs> He's like, yeah, well, well, I never, do. <laughs> never put the camera way above or way below. No, I mean, from my uh, my absolutely terrible attempt at it a few oh, minutes ago. Yes, yes, do you have well, any tips for me there? <laughs> Well, I'd, I'd get a... Uh, Learn get a, how to use Zoom is I what a, I would have said. I get an intern from uh, Penn State. That, uh, you know, they're, and they're very good with uh, cell phones and Zoom and every, and every other uh, social media type. You know you're before. talking to a uh, true professional film guy when you ask him how to do something. And he says, get a slave. That's it. Get somebody else to That's, do That's, uh, oh yeah, like one of those slaves used to do that. You need uh, to change your cinema, to just get one of the slaves. Your no, electricity, the slave does that. We just don't call them slaves. You call them uh, grips and uh, PAs. PAs and, you know, <laughs> and, uh, and they offer, well, if you get this kind of experience, you they're can get called, a job in the real world. They're called PAs. <laughs> yes, PAVs. PLAVs. <laughs> All right, I don't know what I'm going off on there. But I've managed to, I think, show both your guys stuff. As a as a way a way overvalued reward for coming, you now owe me again. Uh oh, I owed you for coming on, but then I showed your stuff, so now you owe me again. Deal. I'm playing this like a fucking Beethoven piano right now, with no legs, just feeling the vibrations. Look how great this production content is. I might be. Is it professional, Shafe, to um, be producing a show and then just decide you want to play around with the buttons while the show is live? I think every place I've ever worked, people have done that. Yeah. You know, it's and it's usually uh, usually on uh, ends up on YouTube. I think when this fight, when we figure out what we're really gonna do, people will see my genius in these videos. They'll be like, "This all that experimenting." They'll see something resulted yeah. in this incredible, transcendental television internet thing that John. I'm kidding. It might be hard to define, but yes, they will see something. What are you guys doing after this? You got anything good going on for the rest of Sunday? Did you already go to church? Going to church? I went to church already. Yesterday, I have a, I have a paper to get done. Go you got to be damn close to being done for the semester, though, right? I mean, we still got a basically four weeks left. Yeah, it's yeah, four that. weeks. Finals yeah. is coming up. Got to prepare my blue band audition. Oh, yeah, a lot you're of, a band guy, too. There's, there's a Whoa. lot of stuff going on. It's actually strange. It's, you're uh, in a blue band? There's a lot of musicians yeah, and awesome. art people and stuff. Uh, what instrument, out of curiosity? Trumpet. That is awesome. The cool one. The sexy one. <laughs> no. 
That's how he picked up his chick, you know. She, she watched him play. How many wives do you have? <laughs> Seven? Nine? <laughs> no. But I've been playing trumpet since the fourth grade, so it's... So yeah, you're it's, nasty. It's, it's, you it's, push it's, those three stupid buttons in all kinds of different combinations, don't you? Uh, yeah. Uh, there is, there's a lot of That's lip all jokes you can make with that, That's but all I, I don't want to do that on the air. <laughs> You're like, I'm a candidate. I'm a serious guest, John. Stop this nonsense immediately. You're Danny. You're a great dude. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you for coming on. Sorry, I'm I um, am not as serious as you. <laughs> you're totally fine. No, as yeah, you. I know that. We're hoping to do a little more, um, maybe like a weeknight thing with some other college guys or something. Yeah, I think that, I think it's a great idea. I do too. I'd like to hang out more, teach you how to be a man, you know that sort of thing. <laughs> And then uh, all that teaching I, of how to be a man, I'll be just repeating what this guy says. Shafe, thank Ooh, you. That's bad. <laughs> thank you for coming on. I enjoyed it. I uh, really look forward to some of the film stuff we're going to do yes. and all that. Yeah. You are a, a great. A lot of work up the road. Wealth of knowledge and uh, very much yourself in the best possible way. So I'm happy to have met you. And you too, bud. Goes back your way. Thank you, world champions in the chat. I'm going to pull that up while I grab any final super chats that I might have missed. But have at it. <laughs> now is your time to go nuts. I see a lot of memberships being gifted. Dr. Tetanus. So thank you for that. That will allow you to be highlighted in the chat. Laughing dog, welcome. Oh, I see. So those are people <laughs> claiming them. And then I had Bear Bear, which we've, we've gotten to these. Okay. Let me make sure I didn't miss any here. Ooh, I forgot totally about uh, Ashley Biden. Bear Bear right now. Make commercial. Why did that pop up again? The chat remains a mystery. On Rumble. Let's take a look through Rumble here. And that was C to Shining C, who we got. And then let me pull up OBS here real quick. Uh, da, 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 and see if uh, this little coding thing wants to help me out at all. It does not. So Stack if I have phone. missed your super chat, I apologize. It continues to be a work in progress. Let's make it live again. This is everybody. You're now live. Uh, so thanks again to Danny Kunzelman, PA15 RNC delegate election coming up April 23rd. Send him a vote if you're in that area and Shafe will have some content for you and then some pretty cool stuff on his channel as well. Dodger from Pilt, thank you for joining us. Linda Love, thank you for joining us. Uh, William, thank you for joining us. Kyle, Maximum Midwest, I think that was everybody left, right, center, right, center, left, up. I think that was all of them. Moon, I'm sorry I kind of screwed the pooch on the time. Gen X Granny, what's up? Thank you for the pink shit emojis and welcome back to the show. <laughs> I have seen you before. Kyle for the crowns. World champions, thank you. Another good show in the books. The show continues to evolve. We are aiming for some point in like May, I'm guessing, that we will have everything together. Until then, excuse me, it's just a lot of fun. An experiment. Harambe's on the screen. Harambe's everywhere. Reing in the chat. Swearing in the chat. If you want to be a participant in the next group call in Gilded, link is in the video description. Join it there. We'll coordinate. We'll do another test call sometime around Friday, Saturday, and we'll get you in there, especially if you have your own channel or anything you want to promote. Send me those links. That's what I'm here for. I'm your guy this year. That is it for today. There it is. I got the button without looking at it. I am John Ward, and until next time, remember, you're a world champion. Don't let your memes be dreams. <laughs> <laughs>